you're selling the stuff you stole. I'm glad you told me. Ah, who's fencing it for you? Okay, okay, I'm getting fed up with this. I'll talk. I got a hobby. I train white mice. I train them real good. So every day I give each of them a diamond and send them out to make a sale. And every night they bring me back the money. A comic. All right, go on. Let's see how long you keep being funny. Listen, I spent five years in jail for something I didn't do. I'm out now. I did my time. Get off my back. Just a minute, Lieutenant. May I... Uh... <clears throat> Mr. Tanner. My name is Hart. I'm with the Consolidated Insurance. Now, we paid out $125,000 for those jewels you stole. I stole nothing. Okay, okay, I stand corrected. But look, in the five years that you've been in prison, not a single item of the stolen goods shows. Now, you're free for one month, and pieces show up in Miami, New Orleans. Now, what are we to think? Those mice sure get around, don't they? Keep it up, Tanner. Keep on being funny, and you'll go right back. You know you can't try me twice for the same rap, Lieutenant. Look, Tanner, we are not trying to hound you. All we want is the jewelry. Now, why don't you ask him? He had all the answers at my trial. Well, do we go around the mulberry bush again, Lieutenant? Come on, book me or let me go home. Go on, get out. Well, what do you think? Oh, he's guilty, all right. I don't know how he's doing it, but I'm going to find out. He knows darn well he can't be tried twice for the same crime. Now, for the last month, the police have had a 24-hour tail on him. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And still the stolen jewelry shows up, right? Yep. How he does it licks me. I don't know. I give up. Lieutenant Peters has cooperated beautifully, but he can't spare the men any longer. That's why I want you on the case, Diamond. Well, I'm very flattered, Fred, but what about your own investigators? No, no. No, I need a fresh pair of eyes, and you mind. We're too close to this case. Now, I know that you get a hundred a day and expenses. All right, I'll pay that. Or ten percent of anything you recover for us. How much is missing? hundred grand. Give or take a little. Give or take a little. Now, it didn't take a genius or a univac to figure the percentage. Ten grand for recovering a few baubles. Well, I'm not mercenary, but I figured the government could use the tax money. Ten percent, Fred. You got yourself a deal. Why don't you fill me in on the details? Well, Tanner was a costume jewelry salesman. He called on Variety Jewelers on 5th about once a week. But one night, after his usual weekly visit, their safe was cracked. You mean they arrested him on the basis of his being there that afternoon? No, the next day, the police received an anonymous phone call. They searched Tanner's apartment and found two stolen bracelets in his sample case. An anonymous phone call? Yeah. Oh, here's a complete file on Tanner. Now, all the police were able to recover were the two bracelets. Until Tanner got out of jail last month. That's all. Well, I'll do what I can. Now, I know you will. Well, maybe I'll get a good night's sleep now. And spend a little time with my family. Good luck, Rick. Anything you want or need, just call me. All righty. <laughs> Tanner's file several times. I even got a complete transcript of the trial. Tanner maintained his innocence throughout, unable to explain how the bracelets got into a sample case. Then I had to find out for myself what kind of a guy Tanner was. Mr. Tanner? Yeah? I'm Richard Dunn. Well, if you're selling anything, my wife isn't home. Uh, I'm not a salesman. I'm a private detective. 
You know, I am getting fed up with cops. And in my book, a private detective is the lowest. Now, Mr. Tanner, I'm only trying to help. That'll be the day. I was hired by Consolidated Insurance. I don't care whether you're guilty or not. I just want to recover the jewel. Oh, my guilt doesn't seem to matter to anybody. Is that it? I'm only a guy trying to make a living. There are other ways. Well, let's figure I'm not very bright. Do you mind if I sit down? Go ahead. I, uh... Don't suppose you have any notion how the bracelets got into your briefcase? No. The prosecutor said I was clever enough to stash the stuff away, but stupid enough to leave damaging evidence. You have no idea. Mr. Diamond, I must have set my case down a hundred times that day. In stores, and restaurants, even in my car. I usually leave it in the back seat. Was that smart? The stuff retailed for three dollars and fifty cents. Who's gonna steal it? Have you got any enemies? Does a dog have fleas? Sure, I suppose in business you're bound to step on some toes once in a while, but... You gonna go back to your old job? That's another laugh. Biggest year the company ever had, and the boss says he can't use me. And those other salesmen, they look at me as if to say, well, what are you doing here with a hundred grand stashed away? Listen, Mr. Diamond, do me a favor, will you? Tell that Mr. Hart to get the police off of me. Tell him to leave me alone. Well, they're only trying to do their jobs, Mr. Tanner. Only trying to do their jobs? What are they trying to do, figure out new ways of torturing people? Listen, I'm sick to the teeth with it, you understand? I'm fed up. Leave me alone! Tom! Oh, this... This is my wife, Jane, uh, Mr. Diamond. How do you do? Yeah, well, uh, if that'll be all, Mr. Diamond. Yeah. Thanks for the chat. He'll say my goodbyes to you, what? I'm sure. Who is he? Well, some private detective. He works for the insurance company. Hey, three steaks? Oh, honey, you won't mind. I asked Lou Granger to dinner. He was so wonderful to us, and we hadn't had him over since the night you came home. You didn't ask him to find me a job, too, did you? Well, what if I did? Oh, he's done so much for me already, honey. Look, I knew you wouldn't ask him. Fine. So I did. What's the harm? You forgive me? Sure. Make mine medium rare, huh? I give you my word, it's okay. Makes no difference to him, believe me. Auto supplies, it's a new line, Tom. And not a bad one either. He's uh, expanding. Couple of years, you can manage your branch, go in for yourself. Sounds pretty good. Most of the young guys working there now, uh, they were all in school when you... Well, you'll like it. When you want to start? Start tomorrow if you like. Well, let's start Monday, huh? We'll, we'll make it a clean week. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Go in well-dressed. Pays to look well, that's what I always say. And, uh, well, some people treat you differently when your suit's pressed. I hate to eat and run. Gotta go. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Lou. I, I mean, what can I say? Well, see if you like the job first, huh? Well, let me say thanks for a nice meal with real nice people. So long now. So long, Lou. Darling, it's the beginning of a new life for us. Yeah, I, I, I guess it is. I had been keeping close tabs on Tanner for three days. I was about convinced that he was innocent when Fred Hart called to tell me that some more of the stolen jewels had shown up in Detroit. Well, there are only two possibilities. One, that Tanner gave the stuff to someone to hold for him till he got out of jail. The other one is that... Yeah. He... Why would he do that? the stuff was sold while he was in, why, Tanner would be in the clear. Yeah, but would he trust anyone to handle it for him? I don't think so. I think he's handling it and right from here. But how? What do you know about uh, Mrs. Tanner? Mrs. Tanner? Yeah. I've got a file on her. She works for an electronics firm. Has for years. Good record with the company. On the job every day, nine to five. <laughs> Mrs. Jane McManus Tanner. With an hour off for lunch. What? At lunch, Fred. Lunch, or she goes uh, shopping, hands someone a bag. Supermarket's a busy place. Yeah. Hope you're right. If you're not, where do we go from there? That's a good question. 
Well, I don't know. Let's cross the bridge when we come to it. See you later. All right. In any kind of work, it's easy to overlook the obvious. The police and the insurance company had checked Mrs. Tanner out. But uh, you'd be surprised how a nine-to-five job puts one in the clear. But I knew from experience that many a crook has punched a time clock. Mrs. Tanner uptown to one of the nicer residential districts. And this was definitely not the place where she worked. Well, there were roughly about 150 apartments and it wouldn't be easy to find the one she went to. May I help you, sir? Uh, yeah, the uh, lady that got in the elevator dropped us on the sidewalk. My, a nice man. What apartment did you go to? I'll give it to her when she comes down. Uh, now, there's an awful lot of money in here, and I might get a reward. She went up to Lou Granger's, 7B. Has she ever been there before? I don't know. She asked what apartment Mr. Granger was in, and I told her. Thank you. Hey, wait! While Mrs. Tanner was socializing upstairs, I phoned Fred Hart. I got a quick rundown on Granger. Aside from the fact that Granger was a good friend of the Tanners and had paid for the expenses of the trial, Hart couldn't give me any other details. But to my little old suspicious mind, Granger was acting just uh, a bit too friendly. another little stop on her busy agenda. A neighborhood pawn shop. Jewelry bought and sold. The big question was just what kind of jewelry this pawnbroker was handling. $50 to buy my husband a decent suit to go to work in. Left the pawn shop feeling like a low down, miserable heel, and all morning I couldn't shake that feeling. Mrs. Tanner also explained that she'd gone to Lou Granger's to thank him for getting Tanner a job. For the first time since I hung out my shingle, I felt like turning in my permit and looking for a job myself. my life. What you do, Tanner? Try to cheat your partners out of the payoff? Go on and get out of here. Nobody asked you in here. I opened the door and they, they put the muscle on me. They wanted the stuff. Just like that. 
Well, look, who were those guys? What did they really want? I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. You don't believe me. Well, okay, how did they get to you? I don't know. The grapevine, I suppose. How do any of these things happen? Cop talks in a bar. Employee tells a friend. Next thing you know, you got a couple of finks on your neck. It could be hit. Here, sit down. You want a doctor? No, I'm all right. Let me alone. Get out of here, will you? And stop following my wife. to Lieutenant Peters, please. Uh, Peters, this is Diamond. I gave Lieutenant Peters the license number of Tanner's two playful chums. I was beginning to feel pretty sorry for Tanner. Maybe he was telling the truth. But I still wasn't quite ready to give him a clean bill of health. Get out of here. Now get out. got a quick look at the name in the bank book, but that was enough. Jane McManus. Mrs. Tanner's maiden name. I told Lieutenant Peters to meet me at the Merchant's Bank. Together we might shed a little light on the missing jewels. Tom, what's wrong? Why did you call me at work? What happened here? I had a visit from a couple of hoodlums. Your face. Poor darling, what did you... It's a good thing they came, or I wouldn't have found this. Tom? Start lying. Tell me where you got it. Maybe you saved it out of your earnings, huh? Maybe you won it on the horses. I'm waiting for your story. I was going to surprise you. You sure did. I was going to open a business for us. Both of us. Hi-fi equipment. I have some experience. and It's a good business these days. Why well, don't you start lying, huh? Four deposits in a month? One every week? I just got out of jail. It's funny, isn't it? You're suddenly getting rich. The stuff starts to show up. How come, huh? Who are you working with? Tell me. No. Who is it? Granger. Granger? You and Granger? It's not what you think. Planted? You put the stuff in my case. I'll call the police. I'll tell them everything. I don't care anymore what happens to me. 
Get your coat off. We're gonna find the stuff. Then you won't have to worry about what happens to you. When Peters met me at the bank, it was after hours. But we had no trouble getting in to see one of the vice presidents who uh, was very cooperative. Hello, Mary. Check an account, please. Jane McManus. I can't tell you the exact amount, not even the police. But I can tell you if it's a substantial account and when it was opened. Will that help? That it will. Now go ahead. In the high four figures. Opened five weeks ago. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, sir. Come on, Peter. <laughs> Don't you, Diamond? If Mrs. Tanner returned from work soon, I wanted to be here to greet her. You know, there was still the matter of the 10%. Now, as much as I like Peters, I didn't like him enough to share the money. They nabbed the two guys that shoved Tanner around. Well, I'll be right back. Oh, you did? Well, I want to talk to those two guys. Hold him. Assault and battery. Right. You want a lift? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, uh, about Granger, you, uh, got something I ought to know? Now, come on, let's not play any games. No, uh, Fred Hart asked me to call you about Granger, that's all. You can ask him. Okay. So long. Yeah, so long. Mrs. Tanner should have been home by now. If she was working late, maybe I could stop her. Uh, let me speak to Mrs. Tanner, please. Oh, she did. She had left work at four. Suddenly, the little monitor inside my head began to sort the pieces of the puzzle and was arranging a pattern. A little bell rang with a sharp clatter. It's Jane. She kept after me for months. Tom makes peanuts, she said. Let's make a killing, Lou. A killing. Even the plan to keep the stuff off the market until you were sprung was hers. It's a pleasure to see you crawl. Okay, her plan, my plan. What's done is done. Let's share the money, Tom. Who's going to share the time I did, huh? You made seven grand a year, right? That's 35,000 you got coming. Her share and yours, that, that amounts to over $60,000. Oh, I thought you two were going to go away together. Don't be silly, Tom. I bought one ticket to Brazil. One. Here, I'll show you. It's my wallet. I never carry a gun. I, I was growing alone. See? See my point, Tom. We'll get rid of the rest of the stuff and... Where is this stuff? Out, out of town. Chicago. He's lying. He's got it. In the wall safe. Get it. Get over there. Take all of it, Tom. Go on, we won't say a word. Tom, please don't shoot. Don't. You won't get as far as the lobby if you kill us. He's right, Tanner. Now, you're not going to kill anybody. Don't bet on it. Come on, give me your gun. You can walk out that door clean as a whistle. The state will pay you for the time you spent in jail. Oh, now, quit grandstanding. You're no killer. How do you like that Granger? Hannah's best friend. Did so much for him. Well, it just goes to prove the old saying. Timmy O'Donnell's. Et dona foretis. Which means... Uh, beware of Greeks bearing gifts.
idea. Next time you cut my cinch strap off. What are you talking about? I never touched it. You're a crawling liar. Let me go. I'll kill him. I mean, I'll kill him. nothing new about two cowboys trying to knock each other's teeth out. So I was surprised when one of them routed me out of bed that night and asked me to hot-foot it over to the garden. You looking for someone, Mac? Yeah, Ed Murdoch. He's over there. You, Mr. Murdoch? Hi. Richard Diamond? That's right. Say hello to my wife. Hello? There she is. Cutting air through. If I'd ridden this saddle in the calf roping, it would have busted for sure. And I'd landed on the dirt in my head. But are you sure this was cut? It was almost as good as new this morning. Somebody wants to see me break my neck. Well, if you think that, Mr. Murdoch, you ought to call the police. Oh, no. I got a big question to settle first. You see, Bud Lee's back in the rodeo this year. Bud Lee? Ed thinks Bud cut that strap. We call the police, Bud might be disqualified. Ed's been champion cowboy for the past two years, but there has been talk that Bud could have beaten him out of it if he hadn't been laid up with a broken leg. Ed has a right to be proud of his title. He's worked years to get it. Now he wants to retire. We don't want that title clouded up. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Murdoch, that's all fine and good. So you just stick around. See that he doesn't try something else. Hey, Murdoch! Hey. Come check the new pony. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Hi. Oh, hi. This is Richard Diamond. This is Charlie Decker. He takes care of Ed's investments. How are you, Mr. Diamond? Fine, how are you? I was just telling Mr. Diamond how glad I am he's here. He can keep Ed out of trouble. Yeah, he's under quite a strain. It's all keyed up. Ready to pick a fight over any little thing. And Ed's a scrapper. But then again, you gotta be to get anywhere in rodeo. Well, he isn't as rugged as he thinks he is. <laughs> well, as I understand it, you want to hire me as a combination bodyguard and, uh, diplomat. Yes. I don't want my husband to end up with a broken jaw or a cracked skull. I'll take care. Still going to play poker tonight? It's Tuesday, isn't it? A new pony's favoring his left foreleg. Charlie, put Mr. Diamond on the wall. And then take Marcy back to the hotel. I'm in the mood for some poker. Poker? You think you should? Honey, it's early. But after what happened with Buck Lee? I'm not going to run off and hide in the hotel room. I'll take Mr. Diamond with me. It'll make you any happier. Well, all right. But don't be out late. You have bronc riding tomorrow. I know. Good night. Good night. All right. Go on. Look, I want to talk to you about those aircraft securities. I think I'm going to pass them by. Got to start getting conservative. <laughs> start getting conservative? It's going to take a lot of cash to stock that ranch the way I want it. I'll take Marcy home. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. Yeah, goodbye. One. I'll raise you. I was afraid of that. Come on, bud. Take it easy, huh? I don't have to ride tomorrow. I got the day off. Got room for two more? Sorry, Murdoch. 
This is a friendly little game. Oh, we got lots of room. I'm uh, Bud Lee. Hi, I'm Richard Diamond. Hi, fellas. I take it you must be Mr. Murdoch's chief accountant. No, I'm just a writer doing a piece for the rodeo. A writer, huh? Yep. Well, we'll give you plenty to write about. Come on. And no thanks, I'm trying to quit. I guess I'll bet a fool. I'll call. A pair of Johns. Kings and threes. All right. Feel us in. It was right out of an old western movie. The poker game, the costumes, the liquor. You know, all that was missing was a slinky dame in a tight red dress hanging around in the background. Guess you're kind of surprised to see me here, huh? Just this morning he was trying to put the bite on me. What'd you do, Cloudy? Rob a bank? Got me a job. Got me a pip of a job. I, uh, hear you're doing pretty well with the rodeo this year. You said it. There's going to be a new champ this year. Right, Mr. Murdoch? I'll give you a story for your magazine. About the champ here. Oh, thank you, but I've already interviewed Mr. Murdoch. Come on, come on, let's play cards. He's the richest cowboy in the rodeo. He don't drink, he don't even smile. Just sits on that money. Uh, I believe it's yours to open. Pass. Oh, well, he does love that prize money. <laughs> he loves it dearly. But he's, he's turning yellow. That's enough. Why, he's scared right down to his garters. That's how he's going to retire. That's why he's trying to get me disqualified. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey, I got another story for you. You see this here slug? That bullet was fired by a very famous man. A very famous man. And he gave me the gun, too. Hey, where's my Roscoe? Here, right here. My good luck charm. Don't bring me much love, but it's all I got. Come on, let's go. You're okay for our writer. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bud Lee was out of the way, so I figured there was no harm if I let my client play a few hands. I let him play a while, then talked him into going home. I guess you noticed I don't run with a herd much. Matter of fact, I did. I'm not much on getting drunk and throwing money around. Not that I've got anything against the boys, but who wants to wind up like Cloudy Sims? I see what you mean. I probably would have if Marcy hadn't come along. You know, Cloudy used to be one of the best cowboys in the business. You better didn't have someone to set him straight. <clears throat> you want me to stay over? No. Just pick me up tomorrow at 10. All right. Good night. Good night. Mercy! I'm out here, darling. Got home early. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ed. What happened this time? Nothing. Ed, that shirt did not get torn by itself. During humidity in this town stiffens up a rope like glue. I hate to sound like a school mom, but when are you going to learn how to behave? When are you going to leave me alone? Where are you going? For a walk. You don't have to do that. I'm sorry. I just want to get some air. No, hold up. I'll go with you. Oh, you've got to get some sleep. I'm not tired. 
Besides, you can't go out there walking alone this time of night. Oh, look, darling, I don't like henpecking you all the time. Well, I guess you got plenty of reason. You've been kind of hard to live with. Now remember this, one more week and we'll be through with this whole mess. No more cities, no more hotel rooms. We can start living like human beings. Police department. A hard-working police department got me up at the crack of dawn. They batted me with a dozen questions about Ed Murdoch and then hauled me downtown. I had plenty of company, but that was no consolation. Nobody was feeling particularly sociable. Marcy, you all right? Lieutenant, how much longer does she have to stay? I can't tell you. Rick. You can keep the pack. Fine detective you turned out to be. Three hours after you take the case, your client gets shot. And where were you? Home in bed. Mac, I told your boys, Mr. Murdoch said he was going to turn in for the evening. Yeah, it seems like everybody was home in bed. Balsam, Cloudy Sims, the Sloan brothers, and Bud Lee. Well, can they prove it? Not only Cloudy Sims, he just checked into a hotel. What about witnesses at the shooting? The boys combed the street, both sides. Everybody was asleep. Mrs. Murdoch was the only witness, and she didn't see the killer. The uh, coroner sent these up, Lieutenant. Oh, thanks, Joe. Two slugs from the body, 45 caliber. But there is no murder weapon. What about Bud Lee's gun? He claimed somebody stole it while he was asleep. Well, you can still check. How? He wears a slug on his belt buckle. It was fired by that guy. It's about time you contributed something. I tried, Lieutenant. Mr. Lee! Where did you get that slug? Will Rogers gave it to me. Will Rogers? He and my old man were buddies, way back. Gave it to me when I was a kid. Gave me the gun, too. Where is the gun? I told the lieutenant. It's gone. I'd like to borrow that belt for a while. All right, wait outside. I want you to check that belt in for evidence and have the lab run a comparison between the slug on that belt buckle and these. Right. And here's that sketch you wanted. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Murdoch, please. Lieutenant? All right. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Murdoch, this is a sketch of the street where the shooting took place. Will you please show me where you were? You mean when the shots were fired? Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. Now, where did the shots come from? That doorway. Right here. Now, think clearly, Mrs. Murdoch. Did you see who it was? It was too dark in the doorway. I did hear something, though. What? A woman running away. A woman? I heard high heels clicking on the pavement. But you didn't see who it was. No. It all happened too fast. Well, thank you, Mrs. Murdoch. Will you wait outside, please? A woman. Where does that leave us? Exactly where we were. Cowboys wear high heels, too. Yeah, that's right. 
The range was about 40 feet. The slug's hitting the bullseye just above the heart. I wonder if Bud Lee was sober enough to shoot that well. well he was a crack shot. He got his start with a trick shooting act. Who said that? The, the big guy, uh, Sims. Well, that's very interesting. How so? Well, Sims volunteered this information, I think? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ed Murdoch told me that Sims put the bite on him for some cash. Yet that evening he showed up at the poker game with a bankroll. He kept talking about a pip of a job he had. Sims. High heels. about this new job you've got, Mr. Sims? Me? Yeah, you said you had a job. Uh, a real pip of a job, to be exact. Oh, yeah. For grooming horses, naturally. For whom? Well, I... I can't recall his name just offhand. That's why they call me Cloudy. But I'd know him by sight. Now go. Grooming horses pays uh, pretty good money nowadays, doesn't it? Huh? Well, that was a pretty big bankroll you had in the poker game last night. Oh, thanks. Send me some pictures. Outside, Sims. We'll talk to you later. Ballistics. The slug on Bud Lee's belt matches those from Murdoch's body. in black and white. Your gun killed Ed Murdoch. But I didn't do it. I was asleep. When Pete Balsam left my room, he must have left the door unlocked and someone came in and took my gun. Everyone knew that I took a poke at Murdoch. Somebody's trying to frame me. Why'd you have your gun on last evening? I told you it's a good luck charm, a souvenir. Did you always carry it? Well, come on, did you? We can easily find out. I've just been carrying it these past few days. Why? Well, you see, I've been doing pretty good in the rodeo, and, well, I'm so close to being champion, I carried my good luck charm, my gun. Will Rogers said it'd always bring me good luck. I needed luck, but I didn't use it on Ed. I don't even have any shells for it. As your motive. You killed Ed Murdoch, so he'd be sure to win the championship. Maybe it looks that way, but I didn't do it. Joe. Look, I'm suspicion of murder. I guess I'll have to thank you for this. Yeah, me and my big fat magnifying glass. Don't tell me you feel sorry for this character. No, Lieutenant, just you. In case it turns out that he's innocent. Oh, Mr. Diamond. Huh? We, uh, we saw them take Bud Lee out. I, I feel terrible about Bud. Well, why? He killed your husband. He wouldn't have. I'd kept Ed home last night. That's what I should have done, made him stay home. Well, I don't think you can blame yourself, Mrs. Murder. Of course not. You, you couldn't have known. I'm sorry. I, I'm just upset. Oh, Mr. Diamond. I hope this covers everything. Thank you. Mrs. Murdoch, if there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. Well, I'd done a nice job of putting Bud Lee's neck in the noose. But I wasn't satisfied that I had all the answers. I decided to go back to the scene of the crime and see if I could spot something the police had missed. It was starting to get dark when I got to the street where Ed Murdoch had been shot. I put myself in the cowboy boots of the killer. Well, it was no use. My hunch that Bud Lee might have been framed was thinner than a Swedish pancake. I was kicking myself for letting his sentimental speech make a sap out of me when the lights went on.
Okay, let's go. Mr. Murdoch, that doorway lit up like a Christmas window. You must have had a first-hand look at whoever shot you out. I did not see him. And anyway, you don't have any right to come into this mean, apartment. I don't have any right. Look, the last time around you said it was a woman. Now it's a man. I said I thought it was a woman. I didn't see anybody. I wasn't looking in that direction. Lady, a gun goes off 40 feet away and you don't turn around to see who fired it? No, I did not. Now, why should I lie? Because you set your husband up like a tin duck in a shooting gallery. You knew he was going to be killed. I did not. Listen, I loved my husband. Enough to spend the rest of your life with him on a lonely ranch? No, Mrs. Murdoch, I don't think so. You're just not quite the type. Get out. Go on, you heard me. Get out. Certainly. Right after I call Lieutenant McGo. This is my telephone in my apartment. I told you to get out of here. You heard the lady. Charlie! Well, Mr. Decker. Put your hands up, Mr. Diamond. I wasn't going to stand by when he turned us in. Diamond, why'd you keep poking your nose in this? You got pay off. I hate loose ends. It offends my sense of order. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have to worry about that much longer. Charlie, what are you going to do? You're going to get my car and drive it around to the back entrance. I'll take him down in the service elevator. No, Charlie, I don't want any more killing. There's no other way. I'm going to get your coat. Let's go. being foolish, Mac. I found out he killed Murdoch. Hey, man, suspicion of murder. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. We'll talk out of downtown. Out. You are getting good in your old age. I didn't know you were following me. I wasn't. I worked on Cloudy Sims. Finally got him to tell me where he got that bankroll. You mean the one he had in the poker game? Yeah, hush money from Decker. Sim saw Mrs. Murdoch cut her husband's saddle strap. I came here looking for those two. Glad you arrived on time. You're not upset by a little old 38, are you? The 38? No. It was just the indignity. The indignity? Yes. Being saved by you. 